Okay, after you've done a bit of practice, it's time to clean your violin. The first thing you do is you clean the strings. Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about varnish because it's such an important part of your instrument. I thought it would be good for you to learn a little bit more about it. Here is an older violin that I am going to polish soon. The interesting thing on this varnish is that it is cracked in multiple places. So one of the jobs that I always have to do is to clean instruments and then to polish them. And that's something I'm doing with this violin at the moment here. I've already cleaned it, so it's got these lovely streaks from some of the cleaner I've been using. And I'm just doing a little bit of retouching because there's some areas worn off. And then I'll get on with giving the whole instrument a polish. In this case, I'm going to give the instrument a French polish. There's lots of different types of varnish and each varnish has to be treated slightly different. So there are about three or four different main categories of varnish. The, the ones you're going to encounter most are going to be oil varnish, spirit varnish, and then you get the like polymer varnish, which is like an artificial varnish. There's also a type of balsam varnish that you can get, but that can be quite susceptible. I'm not a huge fan. Quite often it gets, literally gets worn off with sweat. Some of the most popular varnishes are the oil varnishes. They were varnishes that were used in Cremona in the 16th, 17th and 18th century. Oil varnishes are basically made of oil and rosin or types of rosin. Lots of different types of oil, lots of different types of rosin and lots of different types of mixing them together and then they, they add some kind of pigments or colors into those varnishes and the ratio can be different so the more rosin or types of resin in the varnish the more brittle it'll be and the more oil there is the more smooth and softer it'll be but it'll actually take a longer time to dry. Stradivarius actually wrote a letter to one of his clients apologizing for the instrument not being finished because it's taking such a long time for the varnish to dry. So we know that his varnishes have a lot more oil. They've also done a lot of analysis. They pretty much know the recipe of most of the ingredients of his varnish, which is kind of exciting. The violin that I'm polishing here has a type of oil varnish. It's also, there's one other type of varnish. It's a spirit varnish but it actually has oil varnish qualities and that's a 1704 varnish. It's a recipe that uses some lavender oil in spirit varnish and it gives it some of the qualities of an oil varnish, which is also kind of exciting. So this is an old German violin. There was quite a few of them around at the time and I'll be French polishing this one. Some instruments I wouldn't French polish and I would use a special polish that was designed for antiques. But this instrument here, I'm going to use the French polish technique, which is a technique I learned from my father probably, I actually think I learned it before I even started violin making. I vaguely remember polishing up a piece of plywood. Why would you want to polish a piece of plywood? I don't know, probably for practice. So I'm just going to get together my bits and pieces and then I'll get into polishing. Look at this mess. I'm going to tidy up first. Okay. Don't try this at home, by the way, unless you've spent three years learning how to French polish. I might make it look easy, but it's actually quite delicate because you are dissolving very small layers of the varnish, the very top layers of the varnish. So you kind of get that wrong. You might just dissolve the entire varnish in the process and that wouldn't be ideal. Now I use different ingredients here, one of which is shellac, but there's also two or three other things that I use. 
uh, special resins. And then I use oil to make sure that um, the cloth doesn't get stuck. Okay, here we go. I think this is where I start wearing my glasses. Gotta love the noise of Australian birds in the background. The top plate usually has the biggest rosin build up. The top plate and a couple of these ribs will usually take the most to clean. But right now I'm just gonna do the first pass of the polish. And then I'm gonna have to use some super fine sandpaper to smooth a couple of the areas. So I'm adding a very, very, very thin layer of varnish here but it's mostly using the very top layer of the instrument's own varnish to polish it. So there are a lot of commercial polishes that you can buy, like the Hill Polish and the Viol Polish and things like that. You do have to be a bit careful with some of the oil-based polishes, especially if instruments have had any cracks. This one is actually an older instrument and it's had a couple of repaired cracks here. So if you use your own cleaners, like polishes, the oil from that can actually penetrate into the cracks and can cause those cracks to open up. Also the joints just in here, you don't want to get any oil into them. And also with the varnish, the hand patch here tends to get worn a lot more because when you're playing, you, you know, you're playing up here and you touch this area of varnish, and it can totally wear off the varnish. So quite often I'll add two or three layers of varnish to that area to protect it further. So what can you do to look after your varnish? I was saying that some of those polishes aren't actually so good. So what can you use? So what I recommend is to mostly use a cloth, like a cleaning cloth. This is a BAM microfiber cloth, and this is a uh, just a different microfiber cloth that I've come across. And they're really good to keep your instrument clean. That The big trick with keeping your instrument clean is to do it all the time. Don't just clean your violin once every two weeks or three weeks. You're gonna start getting the rosin sticking to the top plate. Just do it every single time you play it. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Okay, after you've done a bit of practice, it's time to clean your violin because your bow is going to throw a lot of rosin dust on there. Your hands get sweaty and there's going to be all sorts of stuff all over your instrument. So look after your instrument because it's your voice. Get your cloth, which you probably parked on top of your instrument when you put it away, and you start cleaning. So first thing you do is you clean the strings because there's going to be rosin all over the strings. Normally, if there's a lot of rosin, you'll even hear a really nice squeaky sound as you clean the strings. Next up, just clean the neck because you've touched it lots, the pegs and everything. And then you just go over your whole instrument. So you're just cleaning the dust of every part of your instrument. I'm doing the easy stuff first. The, the top plate is probably the harder thing. And also make sure you clean around here where the hand patch is because you, you can get perspiration on there. So next, just clean over the top plate, like all over the top plate. The next thing is quite important. And that's getting underneath the bridge and the fingerboard. To do the, the fingerboard, I usually recommend that you sit down. I'm just not sitting down at the moment, so I'm gonna do it like this, but it's a bit awkward. And if I was to drop the instrument, at least I'm in a violin shop and I can fix it. But uh, please don't do that because, you know, you don't wanna drop your instrument. So much easier to get under the fingerboard on a cello. So you clean underneath here, clean the bridge. Clean the fine tuners, clean the chin rest, and now you're done. But you're not really done because you haven't done your bow yet, have you? So next is your bow. 
make sure you clean your bow too because it also needs cleaning. The biggest thing that happens is that quite often the varnish will wear off just down around here. So make sure you clean this whole area. Be very careful when you're cleaning that you do not touch the hair with your fingers. If you clean the stick between, make sure you wrap the cloth right around your hand. See how I've got it wrapped around my hand? That way I don't put any oil from my fingers all over the bow. So I've just wiped all the rosin off the bow. My bow is nice and clean. Of course you're going to loosen your bow after you stop playing. The last thing that I would do is when you put away your instrument, I would always park the cleaning cloth on top of it because when you park it on top of it, it's just a really good reminder. Okay, we're getting close to it looking much better. I had to do a little bit of sanding in a couple of areas. I use the finest, finest, finer than a thousand great sandpaper. It literally almost takes off nothing, but there was a bit of rosin that was very stubborn just up around here. And I had to do that with sandpaper. It literally just takes off the rosin and then maybe the very, very finest of the top layer of the varnish. Obviously, if this was a $30,000, $40,000 instrument, I would consider doing it differently, but it's not, so it's okay. This is starting to look really nice. I have to let this dry now, and then I'll put the strings on. Just gonna hang this up. I'm just going to put the strings back on on this violin. I don't recommend using any substances for cleaning. It can be a little bit risky. And never use alcohol. Never ever use alcohol. You can on the really cheap instruments, wouldn't matter, but on good instruments it will literally dissolve the varnish. Don't even use it on the strings, don't use it on the fingerboard or the bow or anything, just don't use it. That includes perfume, aftershave, you know there's all these myths going around, don't ever use it. You can use a very slightly damp cloth, very very slightly damp, but you have to be careful that it's not one of the varnishes that can actually be removed with water which would be scary. So it's probably best to talk to your violin maker first, see what kind of a varnish you have and then look at the strategy of how you can clean the instrument best. Okay so I've got this violin beautifully finished and polished ready for another year of practicing. So it's important to look after the varnish of your instrument to make sure that it stays looking good, that the varnish is protected, that it doesn't deteriorate and that the instrument keeps its value. Like I said, there are so many different types of varnishes from the types of oil varnishes. You know that some German makers actually used a ground which goes underneath the varnish that was made from a type of hide glue. And so the varnish basically can wash off the instrument with water, which is really scary. There are other instruments that are just varnished with it, some of the cheaper ones and some of the Eastern German violins that were made after the Second World War. When it was communist Eastern Germany, they used this horrible artificial hard varnish, which was terrible. Also some of the cheap Chinese instruments and some of the Korean instruments used that kind of varnish. There are different beautiful types of oil varnish and spurred varnishes. Each are so unique. There are so many different things that varnishes have been made out of, from the different types of resin, like tree resin, amber, to shellacs, and different types of mastic, sandrac, lots of different materials. Shellac, for example, is made from nest, I think, of a beetle or something like that. So each instrument is so unique, and of course, every single violin maker feels that they have found the secret to the perfect varnish. Well, some people don't. Some are still experimenting. Actually, most violin makers are always experimenting. So it's always really interesting. So each instrument is so unique and so different and needs to be taken care of differently. 
but just wiping the instrument over regularly, I would say every single time you've played, that's the best way you can protect your varnish. Anyway, if you like my videos, hit subscribe. Also hit the little bell so that you get the information as soon as I put out a new video. And I'll see you guys soon. Bye. Thank you.